Some of you may remember, like two or three years ago now, boron was getting a lot of publicity, mainly for boosting testosterone, hence the term the boron bros, I called them, kind of making fun of them. But it's simply one of the many minerals that we do not get enough of in our diets now. It's necessary for plant, animal, and human health for similar reasons in all of those life forms. And when you actually look up research on boron, a lot of it is used in plant studies, indicating that, hey, perhaps we have another soil mineral depletion issue, as with a lot of these other elements we talk about. And before we get started, you guys can check out organsupplements.com. Many of the products and explanations on that website will line up with what we're speaking about today. Over the past few weeks, we've touched on manganese, molybdenum, selenium, and similar principles applied to boron. Various metabolic physiological functions in our body will not be working optimally in a state of a specific nutrient deficiency in most cases people have many nutrient deficiencies. Once you're able to achieve a balance of all the minerals with a minimally inflammatory lifestyle, you'll feel a lot better consistently every day and there's a chance that boron is a piece of that puzzle. When we look at food sources of boron, it seems less likely the person would have a boron deficiency than those other minerals we've been speaking about, even if they're just following a standard American diet. Since boron is a plant-based mineral, it's safe to say that the majority of people seeing benefits from supplementing might have been on restrictive diets, lacking whole foods, maybe keto or carnivore, perhaps even a bodybuilding diet that didn't have enough grains or fruits. And I've made this recommendation many times over. You probably need to use a supplement for several days to weeks and then the body should be okay with food sources, granted your microbiome and digestion is okay. It's just difficult to recover from deficiencies using foods as you have to meet an unrealistically high mineral requirement from past dietary imbalances. You have to replenish as well as get your daily recommended intake, which is pretty much impossible to do. So, same thing guys, blue are foods I would consume, red not so much, and unlike the past lists, this actually looks pretty good. Maybe we're onto something because I do eat a lot of these foods in my diet. Raisins, pretty good. Grapes and wine, I mean, you know, they're all used interchangeably, essentially the same base ingredient of grapes. So it makes sense that boron is in all of those. Peanuts, if organic, if high quality, you know, it's not the end of the world to have a few times a month. Peaches and peas. Never really agree well with my stomach, but cereals, beans, apples, and potatoes are all things I include in my current diet. So if you guys have been following what I've been doing the past few months, probably over a year now, and are doing something similar, you should be getting plenty of boron. Pertaining to mineral interactions, boron isn't usually seen on any mineral wheels you look up, but when you read the studies, it interacts with calcium, magnesium, and phosphorus predominantly. And balanced calcium intake in most modern diets probably explains a hypothetical boron deficiency, while boron's effects on bone maintenance definitely have something to do with magnesium utilization. As with manganese, molybdenum, copper, all of these plant-based minerals that are fairly absent on a carnivore diet, boron is included in those absentees. I wouldn't advise anyone to follow a carnivore diet now, even though eating large amounts of red meat can be nutritious, you want to make sure to be including these minerals in your diet in supplemental or food form. And permanent supplementation is impossible to be accurate with, especially when you have so many different vitamin and mineral components of health. On the topic of deficiency and excess, you know, realistically, you're not going to experience either of these. And another dietary imbalance will probably take precedent over that, so it would be very difficult to pinpoint any of these symptoms to one of those things. Deficiency resulting in adverse bone development, altered hormonal levels, lower cognitive function, and then extreme intake can cause headache, hypothermia, restlessness, renal failure, kidney injury, alopecia, hair loss, indigestion, actually similar to high intakes of pretty much any metal. In regards to metabolic function, 
It's required in calcium and magnesium processes, therefore involved with vitamin D synthesis, has an effect on that bone health and growth. Tying in with the vitamin D synthesis impacts the production of sex hormones. Studies have shown boron having anti-inflammatory effects, improving brain function, even being used to treat several types of cancers. And I think this has a lot to do with boron increasing magnesium absorption as magnesium is the most important mineral cellularly in our body. And I have done several videos on magnesium if you want to learn about those overlapping functions. So, you know, when you take boron and you feel good and then you say, hey, well, those are actually some of the magnesium deficiency symptoms or how people feel after they take magnesium. It makes sense. So I'm sure the boron bros want to know what I think about the testosterone boosting effect. And when people were on a low boron diet, boron increased hormone levels, particularly if their magnesium levels were low as well. One week of boron supplementation in males increased testosterone substantially, almost 50% while reducing estrogen. That being said, in a much longer study, actually done on bodybuilders, they supplemented boron and there was no significant change in testosterone levels. So probably a myth. I've also heard of people taking borax, which is some type of uh, chemical powder. I'm not too sure how they make it as an antifungal microbial. But really any type of metal taken in large amounts in a powder like that will act in a similar fashion. And when something is supplemented in unnaturally high amounts for a benefit, those are almost always temporary, usually relating in just throwing things off again. Um, then you have all these other mineral problems. It can't hurt to try a boron supplement at a reasonable dose, get your hair mineral analysis checked, see how things are lined up. But there is no such thing as a miracle supplement. If you want to boost your testosterone, uh, you can eat testicular glandulars, just eat animal testicles. So, you know, every single component of diet and health, there is a solution, but there isn't one solution to cover every single thing. So thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.